think we can make it just as good, maybe even better. Ponchabole's food is incredible. I think we can make it a wee bit better and a tad bit healthier with a few simple tweaks to each component of the bowl. Since the rice and the chicken take a little bit longer to cook, we'll go ahead and start off with that chicken today. The chicken gets most of its flavor from chipotle peppers. And while you can take the extra time and soak dried peppers, I'll be honest, you're gonna get just as much flavor when you use the can of chilies and adobo sauce. You'll wanna scoop out one to two peppers and enough sauce to make one fourth of a cap. If you want even more spice, you can always sub out some of the sauce for another whole pepper. Add this to either a food processor or a blender, along with one fourth cup of finely diced red or sweet onion, two cloves of finely minced garlic, two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lime juice. And just a heads up real quick, we are gonna be using a lot of limes, so be sure that you have at least four or five of them on hand. Two tablespoons of avocado or olive oil, one teaspoon each of chili powder, cumin, oregano, and brown sugar. This little hint of sugar is my secret to making the chicken so good. If you're avoiding refined sugar though, you can always sub it out with either agave nectar or honey. One and a half teaspoons of salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper. Process or blend on high speed for 20 to 30 seconds or until the marinade is smooth and combined. For the chicken, you can either use one and a fourth to one and a half pounds of boneless and skinless chicken breast or chicken thighs. Breast is what you'll find at Chipotle, but thighs have extra fat if you wanna take the flavor up a notch. If you're using breast, be sure to pound the chicken with a meat mallet until it's no more than one inch thick, and then cut them into five to six ounce pieces. Add the chicken to a large bowl and pour the chipotle marinade on top. Toss the chicken until it's well coated and marinate in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes or up to a few hours. While the chicken is marinating, we'll get started on that rice. And the key to making extra fluffy rice that doesn't clump together is to rinse it under cool running water using a fine mesh strainer. This washes off any of the starches on the outer layer of the grains and prevents it from clumping together while cooking. So rinse one cup of long grain white rice, or brown rice if you'd prefer, for at least one to two minutes or until the water runs clear. Let it drain completely. Then add one and three-fourths cups of water for white rice, or two and one-fourth cups of water if you're cooking brown, to a medium-sized pot and bring it to a boil. Once boiling, add one tablespoon of oil, one teaspoon of salt, and the drained rice. Bring the ingredients back to a boil, and then reduce the heat to low. Cover and simmer for 20 to 25 minutes, checking on the rice after 20 minutes to see if it's done. All right, the rice is cooking, the chicken is marinating. Now it's just time to get started on that corn salsa and guacamole. For the corn salsa, you'll wanna add 16 ounces of previously frozen corn that has been thawed to a large bowl. You can also use two cans of drained corn, but I find it doesn't taste quite as fresh. Along with one fourth cup of finely chopped cilantro, one fourth cup of finely diced red onion, one to two finely diced jalapenos. You can even use a green bell pepper if you don't want any spice. Two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lime juice, one tablespoon of lemon juice. This mix of citrus gives the salad a unique flavor, so try to use both if you have them half a teaspoon of salt, and one fourth teaspoon of black pepper to taste. Mix this all together and set it aside until you're ready to use. And next up is the guacamole. You know those bowls would not be complete without a huge scoop of guac on top, guys. This will turn brown on you pretty quickly, so try not to mix it up too far in advance. Up to about 30 minutes or so ahead of serving should be fine. Add two large avocados that have been peeled, pitted, and quartered to a medium-sized bowl along with two teaspoons of lime juice, two tablespoons of finely chopped cilantro, one fourth teaspoon of salt, and a pinch of black pepper to taste. Using a large fork or a potato masher, 
Mix and mash this together until your desired guacamole consistency is reached. All right, the guac is ready. Now it's just time to check on the rice real quick. Hmm, looks beautiful. Now it just needs the finishing touches of two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lime juice, one more tablespoon of oil. This is like double insurance so the grains don't stick together. And one fourth cup of finely chopped fresh cilantro. Mix this all together until it's combined. Cover the pot with a lid to keep it warm until you're ready to serve up your bowls. Okay, now last but not least, we're gonna cook up that chicken. Thought I forgot about it, huh? It's best if you cook the chicken in a large cast iron skillet in order to get that gorgeous crusty sear. But if you only have a stainless steel or nonstick skillet, that will work just fine. Add one tablespoon of oil to a skillet over medium heat and wait for it to fully heat up. This should take about a minute. Then add the chicken. You'll want any excess marinade to drip off of the chicken before adding it to the skillet. Cook for six to eight minutes per side if cooking breast, or nine to 10 minutes per side if you're cooking thighs. Brush the chicken with any remaining marinade halfway through cooking. This is totally safe to do as long as you do it within the first half of cooking. You'll know the chicken is down when the internal temperature reaches 165 degrees and the middle is no longer pink. Let the chicken cool until it is comfortable to the touch and then cut it into bite-sized pieces. Now time to serve up our burrito bowls. You can use whatever type of bowl you have, but I tend to like using a slightly larger and more shallow bowl so you can see every component of that burrito bowl. You'll wanna layer that cilantro lime rice on the bottom with the chicken, corn salad, a bit of canned black beans that have been rinsed, drained, warmed up slightly, and are seasoned with a bit of salt and black pepper. Your pico de gallo or salsa of choice, all depending on how spicy or not spicy you like it. Some sour cream and shredded cheese. Chipotle normally goes with a milder Monterey Jack but if you wanna up-level the flavor, you can always switch it up with some Gruyere, Swiss, or cheddar cheese. And we couldn't forget a big old scoop of that guacamole. Oh man, these are almost too gorgeous to eat. Almost. Mm, I have guac on my fingers. Mm, mm. Oh boy, is that good. With all those fresh citrus flavors, the smokiness of the meat, that tender chicken. But guys, you know the drill. I wanna know what you think. So be sure to leave me a comment and let me know if you think these are actually better than Chipotle's. Also, if you want more copycat dishes that are even better than the restaurants, then you've gotta check out these recipes right over here. Thanks so much for hanging out. I will see you in the next one.